your core argument and your call to action are part of your vision. This is the only nice little picture that I put in all my, in all my slides. Why do I say this? I say this out of experience. Um, I work, as I say, I give workshops and I also work one-to-one -one with a lot of people. I work one-to-one -one mainly with managers. And many times, I've, many times, in the last year, three specific examples, I've been asked to coach managers in two different organizations and their problem was this. They contacted me and they said, I used to make um, really good presentations, I used to be really confident, my English was really good, and suddenly I've lost all my confidence and I feel like my English is terrible, can you help me with my confidence? So I go to speak to them and they, because I'm a theatre director, they think, oh, you know, you can help me with my confidence. And I work with them and I realise their English, there's nothing wrong with their English, and what's this thing with their confidence? And what happened is, in the three particular examples, these three people had just switched positions in the company. So they had a new position, and they were carrying out a new project. And I asked them, do you believe in your project? And they said, actually, not really. But I was asked to do it by the boss. And that's the reason why they lost their confidence, and that's the reason why they couldn't make presentations in English. They were, they were stuck for it. I don't think they could even make it in Spanish. If your uh, call to a, if your argument and your and your call to action and your big question is not something that you really believe in, then you're not going to be persuasive or have conviction. And I know sometimes that's hard because you're asked to work on things that you're not really interested in. But you need to connect them somehow. If you really really have to do it, then you have to find some way to connect that with your philosophy, with your reason for doing this work. 